My name is Amata, and in this Red Gaming Tech video, we're going to talk about change. I know change can be big and scary and frightening, but I think change is on the horizon, as we had a rather significant change coming to Steam. Now, before I get into this, let's do a bit of background, shall we? Basically, prior to this supposed change, Valve pretty much fulfilled any request from developers for Steam keys, no matter how many, they're automatic. You know, you, you've got a game that sold 1,000 copies on Steam, but if you ask for 50,000 Steam keys, here you go, enjoy. But that is apparently not going to be the case anymore, according to a post that was made on a developer-only discussion forum on Steam, and this was helpfully shared online by Steam spies Sergey Golonkin, whose name I probably just butchered, so my apologies. Now basically, there, it seems like Valve are planning on cutting down on the amount of keys they give out and it's not going to be an automatic process anymore. And in the post that is displayed in the link below, there's an example given of a game that's only sold a few thousand but nonetheless requested 500,000 keys. So if that's the case, then obviously Valve are going to go hold up, something's off, take a deeper look into it and obviously not grant that many keys because something's off. Now you might wonder, okay, so... Why would a developer ask for that many keys? And well, the answer is to sell on bundle sites like Humble Bundle, Bundle Stars, Indie Gala. There are tons of them out there. Humble Bundle is probably the most famous for a lot of people, but obviously they're also going on third party resale sites as well, like, say, Green Man Gaming, etc. etc. So many, many people, including myself, have used sites like Humble Bundle and all that to get some really, really good deals on, on Steam, uh, sorry, on games rather. And if Valve are cutting down on these massively, then you can kind of see the impact that this would have on the industry. Now, obviously, it's hard to predict what, if any, impact a thing is going to have. But I think this has the potential to have quite the ripple indeed. Because obviously, if less keys are being put on bundle sites, then obviously developers are making less money, more games are being... Uh, sold on Steam or being forced to sell being sold on Steam and obviously this does mean kind of less visibility for indie developers and obviously some of these keys are being given out to reviewers such as myself as well but I would say there are probably a small percentage of that number I would say most of them are going on bundle sites so the first question is really is why is Valve cutting down on this number why do they care well the short answer is they're not getting a cut of the sales and they are eating the costs of the game being on their system so Basically, obviously, Steam requires an absolute monstrous amount of bandwidth. I probably don't even want to look at the amount of that it costs. I'd probably have a heart attack or die on the spot. But obviously, it does cost Valve money to host a game and obviously do the matchmaking if it's multiplayer. All that stuff that comes with providing a service for a game, trading cards, all the stuff that comes with it. And if a game is making huge amounts of sales on bundle sites or third party key resellers or whatever and obviously Valve is eating the costs of servicing that game without really taking their 30% cut from the sales because they're being mostly made via bundle or like say there's a decent amount being made via bundle and obviously disproportionate to the amount of sales being made on Steam. So essentially this does come down to the bottom line and it comes down to money because you know, Valve isn't quite seen as the golden child it was a couple of years ago, but it is still forgiven for a lot. But they are still a company at the end of the day. They are still out to make money, and that's you know, that's not some big, bad, evil thing. You know That's kind of why companies exist, to make money. But obviously this is potentially going to have a very interesting impact, especially for smaller indie developers. Now, I think part of the reason for Valve doing this isn't just the cost issue. I think it's also to do with the shovelware problem. Now, one of the biggest criticisms many people, including myself, have levied at Valve is that they do basically nothing to do to do quality control. The service is flooded with absolute shite. There is so much shovelware, asset flips, and lazy games that are just Unity assets being resold and bought by people who just want the trading cards or whatever. And they have been struggling to combat that problem. Unfortunately, Steam Direct has done basically fuck all to combat that. We have seen basically no impact from that so far. Unfortunately, you know, maybe if they increase the cost to put it on there, possibly. But at least from what I've seen so far, looking at the numbers, it has had very little impact at all versus what we saw on Steam Greenlight. So 
Obviously, you've got a lot of legitimate developers, smaller indie developers who sell their game on humble sites or sorry, bundle sites, and that's a way for them obviously to make money and also for their game to get visibility because you know there's numerous games I played because they were in a bundle, and obviously I've gone to play a different game from that developer, or obviously the developer just made money from the sale, that sort of thing. And obviously, other people say, Hey, you've got to check out this game, it's awesome, and even if they don't get the bundle, they're going to buy the game, and you kind of get where I'm going with this. But obviously, there's also Developers of shovelware and asset flips also sell these uh, keys to for their games on bundle sites for very, very cheap. And obviously, these games continue to be played and flooded on the market for Steam. Now, obviously, that's not a bundle site's fault that this game is on Steam. But the more people play it, the more visibility it gets. And you kind of get where I'm going with this as well. So... I think it's partially that, you know, they, they want as little people as possible playing these asset flips. And obviously, if they're being sold on bundle sites, then in, you know, in the thousands versus the 50 people who might actually buy it, you know, rip. <laughs> you can kind of see Valve's issue, you know, if 50 people only want to buy this game, then that's their business. But if a thousand people buy it because it's in a bundle, it is an issue because that asset flippy game is now impacting Valve a lot. And also... It's not just a money issue, it's an image issue. Uh, that's the second prong of this. I think the main prong is money, but the second one is image. You know, Steam is still a really good service, but it has kind of taken a bit of a dive in the eyes of the average PC gamer lately because we've become more and more aware of the asset fit flip problem, not only because of critics and visibility online, but obviously because they are really hard to escape on the store. There have been numerous times when I've seen, oh, this is recommended on your list because you played X game. All right, okay, I click on it. That looks like trash and I'll immediately click away, but obviously the fact that it's there in the first place is an issue when it's some Unity asset flip that took five seconds to make. So the conversation has kind of shifted from Steam being, you know, the saviour and god of the PC platform to a site that is useful for connecting with your friends and, you know, all that sort of stuff, but obviously has a monopoly on the platform while not really doing much effort to do any form of crowd control. Oh, sorry, not crowd control, quality control, excuse me. So this kind of lowers the profile of Steam and obviously increases the profile of sites like GOG and Green Man Gaming and so on. Now, that's a good thing. The monopoly Valve have on the PC gaming market is not a good thing. A monopoly is always bad because it incentivizes laziness and basically gives the company who has the monopoly no reason to innovate because why would they? But obviously, from Valve's perspective, it's an issue. You can so from, you know these other sites are a threat, and the fact that you know their profile is being lower by all this shovelware, and the fact that the Steam sales are not what they used to be because you know they're being sold for way cheaper on third-party resale sites, and because people don't want to give Valve their thirty percent cut, you can kind of see the issue. Val, uh, Valve and Steam have kind of gone down in profile over the last couple of years due to numerous factors, and also the Steam sale is just not what it used to be. Because, you know, developers can sell these games for cheaper and t actually make more money off them on these third-party sites than they would on Steam. So there are definitely issues for Valve. Now, I think, you know, GOG is, you know, kind of gearing up to be in a position where it could actually potentially challenge uh, Steam in the long run. But obviously, from Valve's perspective, that's a big no-no. They can't have that. You know, it's bad news for any company, good news for the consumer, basically. And obviously, I would always advocate for the consumer so you know i think you know other companies should take this opportunity to try and you know raise themselves up in the marketplace but again from valve's perspective why should they give out steam keys to the third party resellers which are then turning into a threat for their business now earlier i said that this could point to a pretty significant change in the industry well, I think how that's going to happen is fairly clear. I've kind of touched on the various changes that it could have over this video. But to kind of just give a TLDR or too long didn't watch or whatever, it is basically going to mean that we'll probably see a lot less of these really cheap bundles. Or we'll see developers moving away from Steam because it's just not worth it anymore to sites like GOG. You know, it's now worth more than ever cons worth considering these alternatives to Steam. You know, the DRM free on GOG, and obviously the deals there are better. And obviously, Steam's issues are becoming more and more public. 
So I think it could have a significant change. Yes, it's going to have probably less bundles as less developers can get less keys, that sort of thing. Less availability of these bundles, obviously. Less availability on third-party resale sites because many people won't play a game in on Steam still. But I think this could signal a change one way or the other. Either we'll see a full flop back to Steam or the other way. Or perhaps we'll start to see a slow moving away from Steam towards a competitor like GOG. And obviously we'll see more competition in the PC marketplace. So is isn't necessarily, oh, get all the doom bells, this is all bad. Because, well, no, it isn't. You know, it's, it's bad news for Steam, but potentially it's good news for us as this perhaps will incentivize Valve to get off their arse and actually address the several glaring issues that Steam have had for many years now. So, basically, everything could, you know, we could see a big change, we could see a little bit of change, or we could see no change at all, basically. And as tends to happen, it will probably be no change at all, because as with Steam Direct, we saw no change at all. In fact, things have actually gotten worse, so... We'll have to see what impact, if any, this will have, but I think it has the potential to change things, but obviously potential doesn't always equal result, unfortunately. Regardless of all that, thank you very much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated. Do go check out us on patreon.com forward slash redgamingtech if you haven't done so already. If not, just a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Every view and every like really does mean a lot to us, and we do appreciate your support very much. So, with all that said, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.